our reaction to the Menendez Brothers documentary on Netflix, grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's go back. Welcome back to another episode of Gen X Unfiltered, the podcast. What's up, everybody? Hello, hello. Eric, Steve, how you doing? Doing excellent, thank you. Kelly, Kelly Steve, Eric. also doing well, thank you. Yep. Good to see you guys yep. again. We're here. Ready for another podcast of Absolutely. fun? Absolutely. Well, I don't know about fun this time, <laughs> but before we get into today's topic or podcast, we're just going to put a little quick disclaimer to say that we are dealing with some very dark stuff. So mm-hmm. please, viewer discretion... If it's going to trigger you, turn us off and catch us in the next one. Yeah, a lot of very heavy, serious topics. Yeah, this yeah, yeah, this is uh, yeah some heavy stuff. So like we said at the beginning, we watched the new Netflix documentary, The Menendez Brothers. Yeah, th- those guys are everywhere right now. Or, you know, it's crazy on like TikTok and stuff. Like, all I see is clips of, you know, whether it's this documentary or the... The monster the, series. The, yeah, the yeah. monster series. Yeah, it's so crazy. So we actually all did watch three quarters of the monster series we didn't watch the last couple of episodes um and then this actual documentary came out so we watched that actually just yesterday so it's fresh Mm, in our brain that's right yeah we did a little research last night um me the monster one i like the jeffrey dahmer one this one was like okay i don't know i just didn't really catch me like the jeffrey dahmer one did no it wasn't i don't know yeah it wasn't yeah just different but yeah because the guy who played jeffrey dahmer was really really good he was yeah although the monster one for manager brothers I've never heard so I haven't heard so much. Millie Vanilli stuck in my head for so much. Yeah. It's crazy. No, I know. It's all over the place. Now, like, I think for me, at least, like, we'll kind of get into it as we go through. I mean, first of all, I'm sure most of you listening have heard of the Menendez brothers. Um, but the monster one seemed to, um, I don't it's, know. It's a dramatization as well. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It yeah. is, right? It's like actors. But it also was really, they. there was just a lot of innuendo, I guess, so that the viewer could kind of make up their own assumptions about things. But like one of the big things is there was a lot of innuendo between the brothers about their relationship, which was just kind yeah. of odd. And yeah. I felt like maybe unnecessary, but maybe not. I don't know. This whole thing is very... I can't There's decide. a lot of things that are open to interpretation in the yeah. Monsters uh, series. Yes. Yeah. You got turned off by that one episode where it's just one still shot on a slow, slow zoom for like the whole 45 minutes. That seemed to look Oh my God. That seemed to write off after that one. That's where we stopped watching. It was? Yeah. Okay. For some reason, it really triggered you. And it was I, super heavy material. It that was. One. Yeah. That was when they talked about all that stuff. Well, they and, did. And I think that that stuff was important to talk about. I don't know why. I mean, it could just be my ADD brain where it was yeah, just like. But this for some reason, I mean, you, the whole time you were just like. Ah, I just, just, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but maybe that's the point. It made me really uncomfortable. Maybe that's why. Well, I think why. that I was, I was supposed to because yeah. it's a super, super heavy topic yeah. they were talking about with the brothers and yeah, I forgot you know. about that. It was a really, really slow zoom. It was like a perspective from the you're looking at the brother, yeah, uh, Eric or I forget which one it was. But yeah. you, know, you, so you saw the back of his lawyer kind of asking him questions. Yeah, it was like a super wide shot, and then yeah. it's like you don't even realize it, but it's just slowly getting close, like over, over the, the course, course of the like episode, forty five minutes, and yeah. it's, all of a sudden it's just like on him. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. which from a technical perspective, all, all the content aside, is pretty crazy and impressive. Like yeah. that, that actor could just kind of go for forty five minutes with no cuts. Well, that's I'd be curious how they did that because it yeah. seemed like it was no, there was no cuts. Yeah. I watched an interview. Oh. But we're not talking about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Anyways. Yeah, anyways. Back, yeah, to, back to the the new documentary. <laughs> okay. Um. Really quickly, for anybody who doesn't know. Okay. First, actually, before I do that, I'm going to ask you guys. Yeah. Um. Before the recent up uh, the, um, surgeons yeah. of this case, um, had you heard of the the Menendez brothers? Yes. Yes, I have. I remember like um back in the day on like late night talk shows like Jay Leno and stuff. Them like regularly they're making fun of Menendez brothers, and that was kind of my. Uh, how I remember that case was the like two brothers that, you know, they murdered their parents, which was awful, but kind of like the media frenzy was more, a lot of jokes about mm-hmm. the whole thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I definitely remembered it. I remember seeing clips of it. I remember like the whole, the, uh, I think it was Lyle crying on the stand and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, oh yeah, I, def- I don't know if I watched it at all, or not, but I a hundred percent remember it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, same thing. I knew of the, the Menendez. I mean, granted, I didn't know all the details. Like I hadn't really like deep dive and researched it till more recently um, when it's kind of been brought up to my my brain and i'm like oh yeah because i love true crime so any information i can get i mean don't like don't doubt me after we uh do this or after we watch this documentary i'm totally going on youtube and watching the trial oh yeah i'm sure it's all there and like i didn't it is i looked because even some of the jurors they interviewed they i know they had like they had written books about it and stuff like that too so uh, you know there's probably lots of stuff out there you can dive into okay so really quickly um 
This documentary offers a deep dive into their infamous 1989 case where Eric and Lyle Menendez were convicted of murdering their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez. The documentary provides fresh insights featuring exclusive interviews with the brothers themselves for the first time in 30 years. So that's the interesting part is it's phone calls from the brothers in jail, like in now time Mm -hmm. so they're kind of talking about obviously because they haven't really talked much i think right after their conviction they did an interview with barbara walters i think it was yeah yeah yeah. but then since then they haven't spoken i mean it's kind of hard they were separated for a long time we'll get there sorry I'm, getting, I'm, getting, I'm jumping ahead Eric again. jumps ahead. Um, you know, my, Eric, my ADD brain likes things like sequential. Well, stay with the timeline. You lead us through. <laughs> That's right. We are the guy. We're just following you on this journey. So, right, at, we'll go right back. So, well, I guess it was August 1989. I don't remember the exact date. It was the like 20, 21st of August. Yeah. Um, and we can say, because they've admitted that they've done this, August 20th, 1989, that Steve just pointed out. <laughs> I didn't read that far, okay? No, but like I was that, impressed that I knew the month. That's like a synopsis of this movie. This is like oh. a synopsis of like the events of the events a little well, bit. Well, then this is better because then I won't ramble. I told you that before we started. But yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I thought you said you had two different... No, anyway, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. The Menendez murders <laughs> occurred on August 20th, 1989, when Lyle and Eric... Menendez kills, killed their parents, Jose and Kitty, in their Beverly Hills mansion. The brothers shot their parents multiple times with shotguns in what appeared to be an execution-style killing. Jose, a wealthy entertainment executive, and Kitty were well-known in social circus, circus? circles, <laughs> which made the case high-profile from the start. Yeah, this is a well because like that's sort of what they sort of said in the document. Like you know, murders didn't happen in Beverly Hills. Like, no, and it no. was like Beverly Hills. Well, it was yeah. you know super safe, super rich yeah. area that obviously was generally low on crime. So this kind of was came out of left field, and then yeah, the, sort of the, how brut- brutal it was, the brutality of the murders. It seemed like that definitely shook everybody. So. I guess we should sort of talk about, too, about the fact. So these murders happened, and this was in the documentary out of their own words. I don't remember if it was Lyle or Eric because they were both just video audio. So I can't remember who it was specifically. Um, So the murders happen. They leave the house. They come back to the house, and Lyle's the one that calls 911. And there's recordings of his 911 call. He is hysterical. He's crying. He's like, whatever. I mean, even though he did it but he's crying he's he's putting on a good oh yeah and you can hear the other brother in the background yelling too and stuff like that yeah so the police come um and again this is from their words and they're basically like the police like it should have been obvious they should have investigated us well they said they're like yeah they're like the fact that they didn't check like because they had so basically what it was you kind of but they you know unalive their parents their whole plan was they went, then they left, went to the movies to buy movie tickets to get alibi. an alibi, then come back and be like, oh my God, what happened? But didn't the yeah. movie, the, they were late, but they didn't even get the movie uh, tickets. That's what happened in the the monster series. So, it's, so whether yeah. that really, I don't know, but yeah. yeah but they Basically went, they were alibi. trying to establish an alibi that they were at the movies. Yeah. Right. And that didn't pan out. Well, and yeah. their alibi was, like they said, their alibi was crap. Well, they, they said, no like, yeah. like if they'd even just, like, did the test on our hands, like, we never, like, we had gunpowder all over us. Yeah. yeah. I had all the shell cases were in my car, which was in the driveway. And yeah. and the story of like, going in and everywhere. seeing smoke was like, that's that doesn't happen. Well, that's what, at least, again, that's sort of like a, in the, monster series that tipped off the cops i don't know they didn't really talk about it much in this one but yeah. well, that was just, kind of like and anyone who saw smoke in this room yeah they were there when it, it happened w- they, the gun smoke doesn't stay no well, exactly let's just for clarification for non-confusion points let's not talk about the monsters one okay you know that's why i'm just sort of clarifying no, know, that some of the stuff we're talking about is from right but let's just yeah. try and talk about because this is from their words yeah their, i think yeah. that's the key thing to remember with this new documentary a yeah. lot of it's from their perspective it's their words which that's is the perspective the, yeah. we're gonna take because yeah. I mean, whether they're lying or not or embellishing, I mean, it's yeah. their words. Well, that's, yeah. The real question this documentary asks, I guess, is like, you know, what they, they did the crime. That's not a question. It's Okay, but we haven't explained the circumstantial evidence that would make us question if they deserve to be in jail for well, life. Can we just see what the question this documentary poses sure. is and then go into like the details after? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. So the, the question is what um, what is the proper punishment for their crimes? Yeah, True. that's the whole, yeah. That's whole yeah. crux of this thing is... Okay, they, let's. Well, they're they're, they're yeah. committed. They're charged with uh, convicted of murder, but should okay. it have should it have been 
uh, a lesser set, a lesser okay. sentence. Yeah. Let's just go. We let's okay. Let's no, we're all over the place. Yeah, here, yeah. let's go back to the timeline quickly because so we talk about the police are there. They're investigating them. They're not asking them. I think they got interviewed like later that night, but yeah. they like yeah. the question. They, they didn't see them as a suspect because again, it's a wealthy family. These are yeah. two, you know. Well, they're like young, adults, good looking, like athletic kids that yeah. don't I would assume they wouldn't necessarily fit the stereotype of yeah. doing this kind of crime so that's basically what it was is the cops didn't they they sort of said I think it was like what, I think they said 98% of murders that happen in houses are done by somebody in the family so like yeah. right off the bat they should have should been have the two most like, biggest yeah. suspects exactly. yeah. and they weren't treated that way yeah. which I mean I guess it helped them well, so they gave were, them a few months of, well yeah. they were kind of of the mindset of like oh we can't believe we're getting away with this so I mean obviously they didn't confess to it or anything months yeah. and months and months go by the only problem is and we don't know I mean I don't know if they really explained it or if they did excuse me I just had a hiccup we take it for what you want, right? Like, we can't... I guess the thing is, too, is we can't put ourselves in their mental state. They just killed their parents for yeah. the reasons that they have that we'll get into. And all of us... You know, they spent all their money. They spent they a ton they of money. Spend, they they're, a, they're doing a lot of weird behavior they went buy, after like, their parents died. They bought a couple of Rolexes, a Porsche, a Jeep Wrangler. Yeah. They, yeah, they were living large. And yeah. for us, it's like, okay, well... You know, you obviously did it for the money. Because that was, the, the, you obviously did it for the money. Well, it's most people who are in mourning aren't. Yeah. Uh, right. Optically, that's know. what it looks like. Yeah. It looks right. like your parents died. Now you're going on a shopping spree. Because I think they weird. said the dad's life insurance policy came in for like $650,000 or yeah. some of that. And it was like, they just. They went crazy yeah. with that check. Well, and now like, you know, they're saying, well, you know, we were just in emotional turmoil. We were like, whatever. And. Fair well, enough, I'm like, sure we're not in that it, mindset, it, right? Yeah. We don't know. I don't know what I would do if I did that. Like, I mean, I wouldn't do that. But you know what I mean? Like, your mind's obviously not thinking properly. Well, well yeah, they're not thinking straight, obviously. Yeah, but, yeah, um, I mean... But still, like, you know, from an outsider's perspective, still weird behavior. That absolutely. Would, the cops should be like, this is strange. We should maybe look into this. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are these kids up to? Yeah. So then months and months and months... I think it was like seven or eight months go by. I think um, it was like seven months, I think. is. So Eric had gotten into trouble earlier a couple of years later where he had burglarized something and yeah, he had was like to go a to younger teenager he had yeah. to go to court mandated therapy so he had this therapist oh it was his oziel dr oziel yeah dr oziel yeah that yeah it was a piece of it <laughs> this story too it gets like it's hard to believe it's like this is it's hard to believe this is real it's so always this these like, stories with these crazy things so yeah he's that's what this, that's one of the jurors said she's yeah. like i couldn't believe this is real like it looked like a soap opera yeah like yeah. it seems so, like it's made up yeah so he goes he's been going to this therapist obviously these seven months are going by and like Eric, between the two of them, and even they both have said this, between the two of them, or other people said this, between the two of them, Eric was the more, like, I don't know, lack of a better word, sensitive one. Lyle yeah, was the, the younger stronger. one was more of, like, a mama's boy. Yeah. This was actually more like his mother. She was yeah. more emotional, more yeah. uh, prone to outbursts. Yeah, whereas like the other that. brother was, like, his dad, more like a alpha, uh, hard-ass, yeah. like, yeah. tough as nails, So do whatever he wants. Alpha yeah. male type, yeah. Eric yeah. was going to this therapist. It was eating him up inside. Long story short, he ends up confessing to this therapist or psychiatrist, whatever he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then they tell Lyle, like Lyle knows the doctor, the psychiatrist knows, so they all know. The psychiatrist, who was shady AF on his own, yeah, had a mistress, and he told the mistress, and this was all recorded on tapes too, by the way. Well, the, the therapist was recording all these sessions for his yeah protection. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so. So he tells the mistress, he breaks up with the mistress. This is just a super cold version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is he, a high level. Uh... <laughs> I mean, like, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty details. No, it's no, not no, really. No. He ends up telling the mistress. The mistress gets mad at him because he breaks up. So she goes to the police and bing, bang, boom. Yeah, she's yeah. like busted. basically, she accused him of something else. And went to the, she went to the police for something totally separate. But the therapist said he, like, he, had, she had, ki- he, was, he had kidnapped her and yeah. stuff like that. Basically held her hostage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what she told the cops. She, oh, and also... Like, He's yeah. a therapist from the Menendez brothers, and he has all their confessions to murder on tape. Yeah, exactly. The cops are like, what, 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 wait, 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 hold what? on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What did you just say? Yeah, yeah. So, it was a very, very crazy. Like yeah. the fact that this is real, and we didn't really talk about it, but the fact that the reason this was Lyle's therapist was because he was the only therapist that would agree to let um, Jose Menendez call him after every session. Oh, that's right. And the therapist would tell him everything his son said to him. That's Which, the only reason yeah. his son could go there. So basically, it was almost like Mad Men. Well, he was being like paid yeah. off. Yeah, 
But no, that's fine. No, but you're right. Like um, Don Draper got Draper, Benny yeah. Draper uh, into a therapist. Yeah. And then after every session, he would the therapist would call Don Draper and say, "Here's all the things that your wife said." Yeah, exactly. But that's so that's what the therapist would do. This with Lyle yeah. or Eric story. Oh my God. Would could, Jose, the father, would call and he would tell yeah. him everything he told them, and that's the only reason he would go to the therapist because he would yeah tell yeah. the father everything. So, so it's like this completely messed up. Well, no, it's super messed up. Yeah. So then the gigs up, boom, bang, yeah. they get. So Lyle gets arrested first. Eric is. Out of the country at a tennis tennis pro he was yeah. he paid like what what did they say fifty thousand dollars a year to become a pro a tennis, tennis pro, pro. Yeah. he hired a, ten- a, a coach to make him a tennis pro yeah. so he was out of the country he yeah. comes home he surrenders they're both in jail boom they're charged with double murder of their mom and dad yeah um now at this point in time like they've confessed it i mean there's i think you know once they're arrested and stuff like that like it's just like they're well, denying it they knew the yeah yeah they were caught it was up there was no uh Jigs denying it yeah, yeah. they on tape talking about it and stuff like that it was like <laughs> yeah. yeah so then they go to trial and don't worry we're gonna get into the nitty-gritty stuff here but the they go to trial um and the menendez brothers defense claim that they acted out of fear after enduring years of sexual physical and emotional abuse from their father jose they argued that the killings were not premeditated, but were a result of panic and self-defense. The trial, which began in 1993, captivated the nation, particularly because of the graphic details of the alleged abuse. Okay, so that's sort of their first trial. Now, so much happens now where we're kind of... This is where... I don't know. It's just it's just a lot of stuff. Because, again, like... They admitted to doing it. Yeah. It was never a yeah. question of, no, we didn't do it. They did it. They said they did it. Yeah, yeah. But then what came out, um, it was also talked about with the psychiatrist and the, you know, lawyer, psychiatrist and all this stuff. But, you know, it finally came out that the dad was not a nice dude. He just no. wasn't a nice dude. I thought it was no. really crazy. Like the uh, prosecution or the defense, they, they had no character witnesses for the parents on their behalf. Nobody would come and no, say no. anything. No, and, they could not find a single character witness that would come through and say anything nice about the parents. The father. Yeah, the father. Specifically, nobody. Yeah. So, Except for his secretary. But Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> speaks volumes about... Who he yeah. was. Yeah. Jose Menendez was Cuban-born, lived in Cuba. Yeah. I don't want to get the details wrong, so you give the details. Oh, I didn't, it didn't get it to me. Yeah, his family was super wealthy, lived in Cuba, right. up until Castro took over, and they basically got right. kicked out of the country, and they... Came to America penniless and broke with nothing. So, and they had to rebuild their family Yeah, and they fortune. basically rebuilt yeah. themselves up. And Jose was like a kid. And Yeah. It was weird. They didn't really get into how he, like, because he did some crazy jobs. He was like the head of MCA rec- or yeah, Records or Capital Records yeah. or RCA Records. Uh, RCA Records hurts. Hurts. Yep. Like, he had some crazy yeah. jobs. It was like, wow. Like, so he worked his way up, right? Yeah, like, like I mean, he CEO had. Some massive companies, like working with like Hall and Oates. He had the drive. Yeah. He had the drive to make something out of nothing, and he did. I mean, yeah. you know, they, they originally were from New Jersey. They ended up relocating to Beverly Hills, and he kept working his way up the ladder and working for these really big companies and yeah. making lots of money yeah and yeah, he's so a, definitely like a hard, he's definitely a hard ass right like, yeah. so not a I friendly mean, guy at all no mm-hmm. i mean anybody that talks about him whether it was work, work relations like he just wasn't a nice guy even when eric and lyle obviously talk about him um it came out that he was horrifically abusive to the boys now yeah take what you want this is one of those things where it's like is this a convenient defense or well, is that it a lot of people were like did this because you know, unfortunately again you're hearing one side of the story and two yeah. people can't give their side of the story because they got well, their heads blown off by their kids i should just yeah. also so say that the, you know, the prosecution's whole you know theory or motive was the money yeah so they killed their parents yeah. for the money that and was they, their motive yeah they're like they because they, 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 they confessed to it yeah they got this massive paycheck. They were living life like crazy. Yeah, we saw all this spending. crazy stuff. Like they just did this. It was all greed. These kids were just yeah. greedy, greedy, greedy. Now, really, before I'm just gonna super quickly kind of give a little bit of detail. But anybody listening, please trigger warning. It's not nice stuff. So I'm just warning you now. If you want to tune out or skip ahead a few minutes, it's up yeah. to you. Um. So he was horrifically abusive. I think Eric had said he was raping him from the ages of six up to 18 yeah yeah yeah. horrifically and they went into very detail like they testified for themselves and they went up there on the stand and they talked about all the horrific stuff that happened lyle even said that at one point in time he had abused eric 
because yeah, his dad the, had abused him. He was the kid yeah. and was confused and whatever. Yeah. Just oh, so it, much heavy stuff. If if it is, yeah, it was awful. Yeah. yeah. I will never, ever, I never, ever, ever want to doubt somebody who says that they have been sexually abused. I never want to doubt no, somebody. No, no, it's, yeah. Mm. And it's, I mean, you see him on the state, even the one of the jurors that was in the interview in the documentary said, like, she was said to Rizzo when, when she was in there being like, either this is the greatest actor in the world I've ever seen, or yeah. he's telling the truth. Or something happened. Yeah, because she's yeah. like, him on the stand, like, it was not. It was awful. Yeah. It wasn't, she did not think, this was not crocodile tears, it was not someone, you know, trying to play it off the camera, like, this is a. So was someone like like a like, broken person, yeah. f- sort of. Because like, these guys kept this to them. Like they didn't even, they even neither brother really knew what happened up until no. Because that's kind of what pre- uh, precipitated this whole murder. Yeah. Uh, Lyle, Eric. Eric finally told Lyle what yeah. was happening. Yeah. And so he confronted his dad, and they kind of. Uh, so it's kind of confusing because they didn't really get in. But so basically they confront the father and then it, they were convinced after they confronted the father. Because well, the dad had told them numerous times in different gonna, he, situations that what will happen is he'll I'll, kill you. So they were convinced yeah. that their parents were going to kill them that night because they confronted them. Because they yeah. also yeah. said like the mother knew she and knew. just ignored it yeah, completely. Yeah, she, she wasn't like a babe in the woods. She no, like, they no. Were, she was like, no. She was, they were convinced that their parents were going to kill them that night, yeah. which is sort of what they're saying. That's why they did what they did. Yeah. They yeah. were convinced. At that point, it was like us us or them. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. We were convinced that our parents were going to go. They went into the TV room. We were convinc- They were convinced they were going to come out with knives, guns, whatever. Whatever and, it was. And make us disappear. So yeah. it was either us or them. So one of the interesting things was when I was watching the documentary and watching um, – more specifically Lyle on the stand talking about the abuse and they were showing Eric listening to the abuse. It's so weird saying Eric because Eric's right there. So I'm always like... <laughs> I'm a different Eric. I'm not the Eric we're speaking of in this... <laughs> it was an Eric with a K. Yeah. And, um, I'm this Eric is, with a C. This is what I looked for when they were... Because anybody can be a good or bad actor, right? But I was looking at... Yeah, same thing watching how the brother was reacting. Well, it's not even the brother... Well, I was watching both, but if you watched... The brother, when he was sitting there, like his jaw was like clenching as he was trying to fight back tears. And it's those involuntary movements that I'm like, you can't act that. No, no. Yeah. You're not going to act and remember, oh, I should make my jaw clench. Yeah, no, no. He was uh, obviously having like a reaction to his brother's yeah. testimony. And, and even just how hard it was. It seemed like you could see how hard it was for them to say what happened. He was happened. biting yeah. his hand. To even say what had yeah. happened from his father. Yeah. It was like. Because they said it like, wasn't just like yeah he yeah. did it like yeah here's I'm gonna just tell you everything it was like it was very hard for them to like Lyle idolized his father right and he didn't yeah. want to like you know wreck his legacy well that was the weird thing too how many times they kept saying that like yeah. even but, as adults now they kept talking about this family legacy that they didn't want to tarnish. destroy or tarnish it yeah. was very weird but like they this, still had their father on this weird but on, on a pedestal yeah. but it's not it's like it's weird for us but like if you think about it it makes total sense well, cause because his dad had total power over both right of them. and yeah. you like, think that somebody i mean and in some cases this is the case and i mean oh, clearly i'm just speaking from my own you know perception but in many cases you know you're horribly abused you hate your abuser no go like and never yeah. whatever but then there's cases where it's like what's that whole uh thing called like the stockholm syndrome stockholm where you have, syndrome. S- you have sympathy or and yeah especially when it happens at such a young age well, and from and somebody you just, that's your your dad supposed to be looking out for you yeah that it's gonna mess it's with your head so immensely oh yeah horrifically like traumatizing and tragic like when it's oh it's just i can't even oh it just gives me goosebumps so lyle and eric and i would say lyle definitely had at least they highlighted lyle's testimony a little bit more than eric's because he was the older brother he had it you know yeah even yeah. though it sounded like eric had had the abuse a lot longer I don't know. He had, yeah. Eric was the one that yeah. he was still doing it to when he was in up the, until the like murders 20, almost. Yeah. yeah. Whatever the age was when he did, yeah. yeah. So it was a big part of the trial. And again, I never want to doubt somebody who's coming forward and saying they've been sexually abused. Never. Never, ever no, want to question yeah, anybody. Yeah. I, you know, I hope that anybody, I don't even know how to say that, but I'm just saying, like, I will never doubt anybody that says that because. You have to be a terrible person to lie about that. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, 100% you do. And But I can see where people are... Because it's uh, well, what they did to their parents. It's like... But I also think, interestingly enough, it wasn't... It was also like late 80s, early 90s. Boys being sexually abused was like a big hush-hush secret. They never talked about it. So it was kind of this like, no way. It was, was almost your... thought it was something that wasn't possible. Yeah. Like, that's or... kind of what yeah. they allude, talk about that. Like, because, and... you know, they sort of now like, you know, talk about like, you know, how much more out in the open this is well, and people talk yeah. about it. And I it's... mean, think about it. Like when they're talking about a 16, 17, 18 year old 
boy who's getting raped by their dad, a lot of people are like, there's no way. Well, because they were like, you know, it looked like he's a pretty big kid, too. Yeah. Like, he was not, you know, like, he was a 18-year-old. You're, yeah. But it you're doesn't turning, matter. Like, you know, you're not no. a kid anymore. You're a... Well, exactly. And they said the, the jury kind of, that's how they kind of viewed things, right? They right. said, like, the male jurors were more like, mm, pff, that didn't buy the, the rape yeah. story. Because, like, how could this be possible? Yeah. Exactly. And they said it was very split right off the bat. And the, like, the, oh, the, the female jurors were more, like, empathetic. empathetic. Like, oh, my God, these well, poor boys. And like, it doesn't even, like... Like the physicalness of it has nothing to do with it. I mean, think about it. This bo- this man at this point in time had been raped since he was six years old. It doesn't matter if he was twenty; he's still in that mindset, probably being a six year old. Being well, not even that, dad. but like, who hasn't been and not? But like, you've been in a situation where you do something goofy, you run into somebody you haven't seen in years, and you just kind of go right back to feeling yeah. like you're in grade school again. You get chastised by someone, like, say your yeah. boss gets mad at your work. Yeah, you're like, oh, you just kind of go back to the like scared kid. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. imagine that to like the. 10th degree right yeah. yeah every day so it's just kind of like i can understand like you know yeah it's a weird but yeah it's, it's, it's like, easy to, for it's people to so, say there's no possible way but it's like no you know you deal with this shit like you it's know it's so mentally that well it's so it on you. psychologically damaging well, as a yeah. child to have that happen to you that that's just who you are like, no and i mean the fact that you know what they did to their parents like n- normal kids don't do that no you no. know like no so, it, it was more it was it was murder but it went beyond that it was like ultra violent well, that's okay thing. so was, yeah. really really quickly because then i want to get into the good discussion we can actually discuss what we think happened i just want to finish up this part because okay yeah there's the facts quote unquote yeah this happens they testify blah 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 the the psychiatrist goes up blah 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 that's my official like quickly, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. blah blah um but i mean people know all this stuff i don't yeah, want to bore yeah. them we're not true crime we're just discussing our thoughts on yeah, it yeah um the psychiatrist goes on the stand. Everybody goes on the stand. They talk. Like Stephen mentioned, there's no character witnesses for Kitty or Jose except for his secretary, and she pro- he probably just paid her a lot of money. No well, offense. No, but probably. Yeah. Um, so they go to the jury. I should also mention, too, really quickly, for those that didn't know, Eric and Lyle were tried at the same time. I had no idea that they could they do each it. Had it their, seems so weird, weird they yeah. do that with separate lawyers and they stuff. Each have, well, they have to have their own lawyer. They can't be yeah, have one lawyer. Yeah, it just seems weird that they do it so that way. So they were tried at the same time. So goes to jury, comes back. I can't remember how long it was. Anyway, comes back and the jury is literally like, there is 100% no way we can have a decision on this. We are split down the middle. We can't decide. Yeah. Yeah. It was completely like, Hung there's jury. no way we, we're totally at odds is what happened here. Hung jury. Um, so that was that. They have to be retried again. Now, after that trial, let me just look at my date quickly because I want to make sure I am not wrong. 1993. So after the first trial in 1993, it's a hung jury. They have to go back to trial. Yeah. In between that time, the O.J. Simpson case happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Los Angeles loses the O.J. Simpson case. Yeah. Not good. They come. They go back to trial. The Menendez brothers, brothers go back to trial. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it factual in my head yeah um this time i don't remember the details maybe one of you guys can like remind me but i do remember that the the abuse was not allowed in no the judge said basically we're not same judge same judge it was the same judge from the first trial he's like yeah we're not gonna allow i'm not gonna i'm gonna block any evidence that comes in that has to do with any of this abuse talk i don't and the uh, the reason was actually really really bs when you look at it with the lenses of today's perspective yeah he said um they're not women, so they can't have battered women syndrome. So all of the he abu- said that he said that the judge said this. Oh, that asshole yeah. just wanted to yeah. win. So all of the abuse uh, um, testimony, throw it out, forget it ever happened. Yeah, I'll, now, I'll, I'll deny it every time. Yeah, Eric's yeah. lawyer at that point was like, "I mean, we lost." Well, it's rather that rather. was our whole defense. We yeah. lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, exactly. She's like, "I've never been in a case where you know." I, we have nothing, nothing, nothing to try and help our clients out. Well, no. and my whole, our whole defense is being told, you know, like, yeah, I, I, we're your narrative of what is irrelevant. We don't want to hear it. It's like, yeah, what, exactly. But this is this the, is why they did what they did. Yeah, this is our whole key to saying it was, um, uh, first degree murder, not manslaughter. Well, for, first degree murder is what they're charged with, right? right. But the the the, the defense was down to manslaughter, and I think it was imperfect self-defense was what they were going yeah. for. Yeah, it was a weird yeah. kind it of... It was a really weird... Because uh, self-defense is more like... If you're in immediate you're like, danger. Literally, someone's in front of you with a knife. Yeah. That's self-defense, but it... This was they, almost they like... They seriously thought that they were going to yeah. get... But their parents weren't there swinging no. knives and bats at them. Yeah, exactly. But in just... their heads, they were going yeah. to be killed. Yeah, exactly. By their parents that night. And that's like what then. imperfect self-defense is more along the lines yeah, of that. Yeah, it's just like... kind of a weird gray area where they're like... 
outside we may not because we don't know all the dynamics of the family and the history and abuse and assault yeah. and all this stuff but for them in that situation they felt danger they were convinced that their parents were going to come through the door and end their lives right yeah. there yeah yeah but they didn't and they weren't but in the Lyle and Eric's well, mind, we don't know, were they? I mean, maybe ten minutes later they were. We don't really well, know. Well, maybe not. Yeah, who knows? Right? But like I'm we just, have no idea. Yeah. If you believe what they say I mean, that they were told they were going to be killed. Yeah, yeah. yeah I who mean, knows? the way they were murdered and the watching TV no. lights on the couch. I'm guessing that yeah. wasn't the case. But but, but it, the end result was the judge didn't yeah, allow that testimony yeah. to yeah, happen. Yeah, it was like I don't want to hear it. The DA wanted to win because of well, you know, the o, the extra mm -hmm. pressure for the DA because of the OJ trial. That's the thing. And also the um, what's his name uh. The riots. Um, Rodney King. Rodney King, King. Thank you. A couple yes, years earlier. A couple years yeah. earlier, right? Yeah, so, so there was already just a whole bunch. Of, but the big one was with the OJ. There. Well, yeah, Gil, the LA he, County had egg on his face. Well, Gil Gar said he wanted to win. He yeah. was. Yeah. He was the, not happy. He was the DA or what? District attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So he was the top dog, but he was like, "Yeah, we can't afford to lose." Yeah. So, anyways, after like the uh, abuse testimony is not not submissible anymore. It's yeah. it's the, the trial ends. Pretty quickly. Well, even well, Lyle. Just well, like, what do we, yeah. well, even yeah. Lyle was like, I ref she, He's like, I have nothing more to say. If they're not going to listen to what happened and from us, like, yeah. what am I going to do? He's, he's like, that's, yeah. that's pretty much the last the public ever heard of me. I was after yeah. I, at that point. Well, yeah. they all like they knew what was going to happen. Yeah. So the the trial comes the the not the trial the verdict verdict. Thank yeah. you. The verdict comes <laughs> down and it's 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 guilty. Oh, uh, first degree. First degree yeah, it was yeah. like oh, unanimous too. It was like yeah. you know, from a super hung jury to like. Yeah, not even yeah. a question of it. it was so like, yeah. all these little details, like I wasn't super aware of, knowing of the Menendez case and stuff like that. Because of course, like, whatever. It's like they killed their parents; they deserved to rot in jail for the rest of their life. But it's like anything, right? Like, yes, ultimately they committed a horrendous act yeah. that deserves punishment of some sort. Mm -hmm. But like Eric said earlier, it's like, what is the proper punishment? You yeah, know, yeah. do you? Do you believe the prosecution's theory that it was all for money? Or do you believe their theory that they were abused and they felt in danger? Yeah. Or do you believe a little bit of both? Like, it's very hard because ultimately you're thinking, no, you took two people's lives. Like, well, yeah, you deserve to be in jail forever. But I think now, like, I mean, I have a whole bunch of different thoughts of like, that's kind of getting me to where I, my opinion is. But like, what about what's your guys' Let's start with Steve. What do you think? So, I mean, it's hard because you know, obviously they, we, they confess to what they did. So mm -hmm. there's no doubt that they're guilty. So the way I look at it, if, I mean, it's impossible to prove anyone's true, right? Because I said the only two people that could dispute these facts are, were, you know, shot to death by their kids. And even then, it's not like he's going to admit well, that no, he did that stuff. No, exactly. So honestly, I, I do think that they were telling the truth. Especially because it came out then that some of the, you know, there are other people have come out saying stuff about Jose Menendez, like, mm -hmm. that aren't related to the family and stuff like that. And but some why stuff. did it take so long, I wonder? I don't know. Well, they were well he was also a powerful man, so yeah. some of these people were show business and stuff, too. So, you know, it's like yeah. with the Harvey Weinstein, it's like, oh, I don't want to... There's a lot of people in show business that hide these secrets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I do think that they were telling the truth. I do think they should be in jail, but I don't think they should be there for life. I wouldn't... Well, do you think it's been 35 years? Do you think, like... I think it's... Only thing I would want to know is what have they been like in jail? Because I don't know how they, like, if they've been, from what I think, is like they've been in there, but they've been doing well. They've been yeah. looking after them. Well, they haven't been, because if you're a violent person, you're going to do that yeah. more than once. They had some trouble as a kid, like some burglaries, like dumb kid shit. Rich kid shit. Yeah, but I don't think well, do you anything has happened since. Like, you know, like I said, especially in a place like prison where, you know, there's lots of violent prone people around. Well, do and you stuff remember, like that. though, that Lyle was saying um, that, was it Lyle? He sorry, he's the bald one, right? When he's older, Lyle. Yeah. Lyle, yeah. He was saying that in prison, he started a whole like, or was part of some sort of awareness yeah. of you know male sexual abuse, so, yeah, I mean, victims, that's the thing. yeah, like, survivors, yeah. yeah. Anyway, go on. I don't want to interrupt. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think if you know, I think yeah, I think they've done the time. So like, it's been like thirty something years. I think, like I said, if they, you know, I think they should get a chance at like parole. Let the, you know, whoever, however they decide that, look at their career, what they've done in in prison while they've been in there. Have they been a source of good stuff like that? I would be okay with it. But I, they killed their parent. They murdered someone. They have. There had to be some sort of mm -hmm. crime punishment. They had to go to prison. They had to, regardless yeah. of what their parents did to them. They still, you know, they could have done something, anything other than 
going with a couple of shotguns and blowing them away. Well, but yeah. right now, again, like their sentence is life without parole. So, I no, mean, do you I, think yeah. that they should be out or just to have the option to be able to be up for parole? I think at least give them an option for parole. See prove what they're doing. Yeah, see prove themselves they that they've, you know, that they've been able to rehabilitate themselves because, you know, who knows? You know, here a lot of people that go into prison come out worse. Now, do you think, sorry, I feel like I'm interviewing you, but you just, I always think of questions when yeah, people talk. Fine. But like, so based on their words and sort of evidence but mostly their words well, it's all their very words. Honest. i mean that's a no, problem no, no. Too. this whole documentary is from that point right, of view right, right. so but just let me finish you know. before i lose my question but my question is is like lyle the older brother was the one that kind of was like okay we're gonna do this yeah he went out they got the guns he came back he was sort of like yeah. do you think he deserves more punishment than eric or they're both just as guilty uh i think they're both just as guilty and actually that is a good point you bring up because they talk about it being, you know, whatever. But, you know, they, they took their buddies. They stole their buddies' license, drove, like, to another city and bought guns oh, there. So that was premeditated. So there was some thought there. They, Again, their whole thing was we were premeditated because we know our parents had weapons. We wanted to be ready. We wanted to be ready. Why they bought ones that were, I mean, obviously, you know, why they bought ones that were, you know, with fake IDs or whatever. Like, it's all these mm. things. So there is, I kind of forgot about that. So there is, you know, there it's is like a these little. There is there's some things. premeditation here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah they okay. went out. Because it's not that they went out and bought guns, but they went out and bought guns illegally. Okay, yeah. so that's your stance right now. Do you think So that I they've... still think, you know what? Okay. Give them, you know, yeah. At least Fair give them an opportunity to get out of that let's place. Let's see if yeah. you may change your mind after you hear other us talk. I don't know, maybe. Let's or, see. Let's hear I'm your... I'm going to convince Steve I'm to gonna change... I'm going to sip a Diet Coke over here. <laughs> let's get into it. I'm going to convince Steve it's, to change his mind on this. I say not sponsored. This is like the, this is like the conversation, This is right? like point counterpoint. Okay, Eric. The, the, so what, the, uh, is counter your, strike. what is your thoughts? What's your theory? What do you think? Uh, I hate to say it, but I agree with a lot of what Steve said. I think. <laughs> well, it's not a bad thing. So it's not like, going to be like a big back and forth here. I think I'm um, not asking for back and forth. It's just more your like different. You're demanding arguments. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's hearing your more perspectives of things. Like no, no, I, I think like this case is just like so impossible to get right in a lot of ways mm -hmm. because like Steve was saying, you have there's no way to prove the parents were abusing their kids, right? It's all their um, the Menendez brothers testimony and then you do have some help in the form of like the cousin who said yes yeah there were some people that did cooperate yeah this stuff Ex exactly way, so form, yeah. exactly so way before this all came out like said yeah like you know eric told me or is it lyle it was eric eric told me about this and he was young like he was young he was eight like years eight old eight or nine years old when he told his cousin exactly this and, stuff. and the mom just took eric away and like you know kind of like ignored the cousins yeah it was like yeah yeah forget about this it's, it's not it's nothing to talk about yeah so I think there was I think there was abuse. I mean, you can't prove it, which is like the real, real, real crappy part. None of this can be proved. I think there there was abuse, and I think, yeah, I think like parole um, should be on the table for them. I think maybe there's an opportunity for them, them to do more some good, like you were saying with uh, Eric's um, foundation he created or in the movement to like bring male abuse to light. I think it was Lyle. I'm not uh, trying to fact check you. I just no, no, no make fair, sure. fair enough. I forgot. I, forgot. I, I get the brothers mixed up. It was the bald up. guy. <laughs> I get the brothers mixed up all the time. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's awful. He's the old, now that they're older, the one's bald. I'm pretty That's, sure it's Lyle. Yeah. That, I thought Eric's the bald one. No, Lyle had the wig. Oh, crap. You're right. You're right. Anyways, <laughs> one, yeah. anyways so if, if they have the opportunity, maybe they can do, even do this while they're in, in jail. Like, you I know, think like, they were trying. Like, ish. Kind of. Because that's a that's a valid movement to get behind. I think it's like mm -hmm. awareness for for male you know sexual abuse Absolutely. and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So if they can do some good there, and maybe like um, I don't know, it, it's hard. I think like yeah, just get them in front of a parole board and see if there's an opportunity for them to get released. That would that would be it. I think. Do you think that? I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but both of you can answer. But do you think that if they were released tomorrow, they were just let out? They're like, you know what? You've done your time. Whatever. You're gonna go out. Do you think they're a danger to the society? Like they're gonna commit something like that again? I don't think so. I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't think so. I don't like think I said, so. I would be curious to hear what they, you know, what their track record in prison has been like. Yeah. But I really don't. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's been pretty like. Oh, I would, would have think heard so. about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And like, is it from what we saw, like leading up to and stuff? You know, there's some like petty burglary stuff like that. Yeah, it didn't I mean, seem like they were. So yeah. I don't. I don't think they would be a danger to society. I don't think they're gonna come out and instantly like go on a crime no. spree. No, I don't think it's the one. Then brothers like shoot up America. Or no, no it's, but I'm I mean, it's not some sort of weird devil's rejects like they're uh, you know going. <laughs> no. You guys want to hear my thoughts i'm so i'm gonna yeah, try let's hear what your thoughts are yeah, going to it said that so sarcastic no 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 no. i'm, I'm trying to get to keep this as quick like ugh, concise just, well my problem is is when i start talking i start like convinced like coming up to realizations as i'm talking and it spins me my whole thing is just it's so impossible to try and figure out what the right thing to do is based on 
all of the testimony. Well, well here's the thing is that in our, at least in my brain, I'm only going to speak for myself. My brain is like, you do something bad, you're going to jail forever. Yeah. Like a murder, right? Like, I mean, you, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like you're, so it's hard to get around that because, but I think like ultimately there really is no justifiable punishment for murder. Like you, so you spend the rest of your life in jail. Okay, cool. But like the, it still never seems like enough, right? No, it's so it's a hard not, yeah. it's a hard thing to get past. But do I believe the boys were abused? I'm a hundred percent gonna believe them because, like I said, I'm never gonna doubt anybody that says that they were abused unless there's evidence to prove otherwise. That's it. Um, it's so hard because there was a lot of premeditation. Yeah, yeah. But was it premeditated because? Like they were so, they had convinced themselves so much that this was going to happen at some point that they were trying to be prepared. Yeah. Then my brain goes to, well, they were 18 and 22. They didn't have to live with their parents. Yeah, but, but that's then, a... I know, but then I'm saying, but then the whole psychological part of where they've been so abused, like they're basically little kids. They might be 18, well, 22, they're little kids, right? Yeah. yeah. This is just, it's all going in my brain and I can't put myself in their headspace because I, well, you know. clearly, yeah. No, I know, I'm just saying, but like. Those things go through my brain. The fact that they were both shot multiple times yeah. from very close up, there was anger. That oh, wasn't yeah, just yeah. like they went yeah. in there. Like he said, five seconds after that door opened, they just started shooting. And I mean, they were like a foot away from them shooting oh. and shooting and shooting. And like that is just that and, was just anger. Well, shooting. And they said to you, like it was a shotgun. So those are. Yeah. Those are not like, you know, those are the powerful and they. Yeah, it's not yeah. pretty. So I have no. to take that into my thought of like, okay, well, there was some like, I feel like if it was just for the money, it would have been more organized than that, maybe. I don't yeah, even know that's if that's a, good a point word. Too. Yeah, yeah. Like it was very much like, oh my God, this, he, like he said, he's like, I ran upstairs to get the gun because I knew if they came out of that room, or I thought if they came out of that room before me, I was going to be shot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah, there was not a lot of. For sort of the pre planning of buying the guns and stuff like that, the actual, it seems like the actual event was very... Spur of the moment. Yeah, because the fact like, the fact that there's cars there with all the evidence in it and yeah. stuff like that, but they did bury the guns. So or whatever. A... The, they never found the guns, did they? No. So I, I think in the, when the monsters, but they alluded that they'd bury them or something. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the fact that it was like an, a shooting with emotion behind it yeah. is like, well, okay. Like, it's just... So what, so, so what do you think? Was first degree murder right then? Like, Eric, I'm getting there. Okay. I know you want me to get there fast. I'm trying. I'm trying to focus my so trying to help the people listening to you, get to... I know. You, you started by saying this is going to be concise. Yeah. You guys are listening to how my brain works. I'm sorry. It's just how it works. Okay. Um, but now I lost my train of thought. So should, <sighs> what do you think? Should they still be in there? Should they be out? I, I'm going to... Okay, it's no, our I, turn to ask yeah. the questions to you now. <laughs> I think it's going to be all nervous. Um, well, no, I was just trying to keep you going. I know. Um, I'm just, I'm literally just thinking it through as I'm sitting here, which isn't helpful to anybody. But, no. <laughs> um, I think it's absolute bullshit that that second trial happened the way it did. I think at the very least, at the very least, their case should have held up and had an appeal because of the way that that was. Yeah, that was crazy. Absolute that the judge and utter being bullshit. able to block all that. It's, I, don't I don't understand how you can do that. Well, no. I'm sure there was legal rules and well, laws yeah, and blah, 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 blah. Of, yeah. But like, come on. Habeas corpus it's, or whatever. <laughs> it's the same judge in the first one. And now his ego is bruised because he didn't get a win. Like, come on, people. How yeah. biased is that? Well, you realize these, you know, say. judges, lawyers, co they're all people, right? And they have egos and yeah. whatever. Well, and, and in the and, States, yeah. they get voted in. So. Oof. Yeah. You know, they want wins. Anyway, do I think they deserve to spend the rest of their life in jail without any chance of ever coming out? No. I don't think there they do. There we go. <laughs> I don't think they do. Yeah. Do I think that they should get out right now scot-free? I don't know. I think, I, like Steve said, I think they should have the opportunity for parole to, to you know, yeah. speak to it and, and speak for themselves and, you know, show remorse because of the fact of the matter whether nobody deserves to be dead. But the 
parents were awful parents, but like at least show remorse for it. I mean, they do. They it talk was crazy. About it. Like the, yeah. the prosecutor said, like the world's better off without Jose Menendez in it. Yeah, even the prosecutor yeah. said that, yeah. which was nuts. Yeah, he's like an it's asshole. A, yeah, yeah. So I he's mean, not a good person. Yeah. I'm never gonna yeah. wish anybody dead, but I mean, he sounds like he was not a nice person. No, yeah. well, said the fact that the prosecutor, the one who was you know yeah. going and trying to get Eric and Lyle put in jail for life, yeah. was like, yeah, <laughs> actually, it's better off without him because he sounds yeah, he sounds like a real. I think yeah. the fact. Piece of work. I think the reason why they're in jail with life without no parole needs to be revisited because that's bullshit how they got that conviction because they got that conviction and not all the evidence yeah like i'm not really big into like legal stuff in court cases but can you reopen a case when they've been convicted of murder well you have to appeal it and it goes to like the higher and the supreme so that'd be like the next logical step is to like appeal well, no, they appealed it, oh. but, it got, but that's what's happening. So the very end of the documentary, I was gonna say they said something they on the said, screen. That's there, when but... you were looking at your phone and not watching the TV, Eric. <laughs> um, there was little text, and please don't quote me on it. I can't remember exactly what it said, but it basically it was like a habeas motion that came up. Yeah. And so basically, a judge has said we can set a date to revisit it. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean no, it's going to yeah, be overturned. But, yeah. but a date to go back in front of the courts to say, hey, this is blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to lie. Like, the social media presence and, like, well, that's, don't don't quaff at this, The Eric. TikTok campaign. Yeah. TikTok campaign. Kim Kardashian's behind it. And she's very much I for, like... better already. What was, she, it, what was it going to quaff at there? Kim Kardashian, because you don't like her. Oh, yeah. But she's very <laughs> big on, like, the prison. No, she got... Like, she, oh, no, there was that one young yeah. man that she helped get out of jail or whatever. Yeah, yeah. she's very Wrongly big on convicted. that. Yeah. Or just, like, you know, not... Well, the crime doesn't fit the time. That's a lot the of the things, right? or whatever, or whatever yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's a huge movement and a lot of pressure. So I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if we do see them walk into prison at some point in time. I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I mean, it's a legal no, process. No, it no. takes I a mean, long time. Well, because they can't show that this is like oh because of tiktok we're now letting these guys out because no. it's so uh, how it became such a thing on tiktok i don't know they're never i gonna... think it was just like younger generation like the gen z's kind of reading about this stuff and started looking into it and like yeah. what the hell is going discovered on? them and then this case and yeah. started reading about it or maybe watching it on youtube well, was like, there's like this is crazy yeah i mean it's it's always been a thing. Like everybody's always known the Menendez. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people our age and movies. you know, like yeah. I mean, it was it was a big thing. Big case. Oh yeah. So I mean, that's where I'm at. But I still just don't even feel 100 percent confident in my thoughts on that. I mean, there's no right answer. I mean, these there's guys not. confessed to killing their parents. Bottom line. Yeah. yeah. That's it. But you know, then it's, it's the circumstances and all this stuff that makes it. You know, it's I do. Nuts. And not everything. And that's the whole thing when it comes to like. That's why, you know, with like the death penalty and stuff like that, it's like there's so many nuances death, to yeah, all these things and stuff it's, like that. It's like, not always black and white. No, it's Never. not. And that's the problem is, oh, they try, the law makes it very black yeah. and white. Yeah. It's like nothing is black and white. There's Here's... so many nuances and extenuating circumstances and this and that. It's, it's Well, and such there's a... also wrong information and, and yeah. inaccurate testing and stuff. Like the death penalty should just not be a thing. It's way too hard to... It's when a lot of places are getting rid of you it. You can never, no. ever, 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 ever 100% say that somebody did something. Even if they say it out of their own mouth because there's been numerous well, times of people at, just saying things to see, say then, things. That's a whole other thing too, yeah. So well, there's also the morality of it, right? If, yeah. if killing is legal, how could the law kill yeah. somebody? But yeah. that's a whole other debate. But I just really yeah, want, yeah. my last one thing I want to say is that I'm, I think I'm kind of torn on and I don't know, you guys, I asked you guys the question or I asked Steve the question, but I do think that Lyle has a little bit more responsibility in this than Eric does because think about it this way. Eric was, Eric idolizes Lyle. Like, I mean, just in the way they talk. I yeah. mean, he, like, Lyle is his everything. Well, younger it's brother, his older brother, bigger yeah. brother. I mean, you know, they've had their things, and Lyle protected him, but didn't. it's very psychologically messy. Yeah. yeah but yeah. would Eric have done this or thought of this if Lyle hadn't been like, hey, we need to do this? No, I think Eric... Went along because this big brother Well, said. I think Eric was going to... The only thing Eric was going to end was his own life. I know. What yeah. it, sadly, what it sounded like, he was not in a good spot with no. everything going on. He was ready to... Off himself. End his own yeah. life, yeah. So is there more responsibility on Lyle for... Well, it's having not even so much that, but it's like almost like we talked to him previously. We sort of talked about the, like here in Canada, Ken, uh, Paul Bernardo, Carl Hamoka. So yeah. two people yeah. get together and maybe on their own, neither one of them done anything, but together and with the, everything, it just yeah. leads to what it did. Yeah. I don't know. At, and the, I mean, at the end I, of the day, they both pulled the trigger. They did. Yeah, exactly. And I think Eric actually pulled the trigger first. I think. I could be well, wrong. Yeah, well, yeah, who cares? They both they, did. They, they both pulled like, the trigger yeah. multiple times. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, interesting. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of different 
thoughts and whatever and oh there's a lot to unpack and listen yeah if you haven't seen the documentary check it out even watch yeah. the monsters one let us know what you think of that there's yeah. a, it's it's interesting it's, it is it's sad it's just a really sad story well it's sad because ultimately like there's four lives that are i mean two of them are gone gone i mean assholes are not i mean still two no. lives gone and then two whose lives aren't gone but they're gone no and well, not even that but then there's like you know her the kitty's well, sisters course. also it's it just yeah real life you know some of this it's, it impacts multiple well, people or like generations yeah um and i mean again sorry if we were discombobulated we always do our best to kind of yeah, stay this one was a little all over the place i think but uh, it's okay we, we uh... just it was uh, these are always discussions though right we're not true crime when we're going through the no no we're not trying to overview. rehash every single point of it yeah well like steve said comment below let us know if you've seen it um yeah. and what you thought of it because absolutely love to hear it um I need a drink after that. <laughs> no kidding. That was, a, that was a lot. But uh, I love this stuff. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it for today's episode. We thank you so very much for watching. And we will see you next time. Take care, Bye. everybody. Bye, everybody.